Hi, welcome to the Middle School Ministry from Mount Pleasant Christian Church. My name is Mike Sheely. I'm the Middle School Pastor, uh, and we are diving into a brand new series today. I want to remind you or introduce you to a resource called Minga. You can find it by going to app, A-P-P dot M-I-N-G-A dot I-O. It's a mouthful. It's there on the screen. You can read it better than I can say it. Um, it is a social media site that's private. In other words, you have to have an invite code, which is ULPO, to join. And it's just for 5th through 8th graders in our student ministry at Mount Pleasant Christian Church. Um, it is for parents and leaders. The main page is set up to be able to have uh, interaction and conversation with students, which is great if you're not able to be uh, live and in person with us. It's also great when you have to miss uh, for sickness or sports or whatever's going on. It's a great way, even throughout the week, if you think about answers to questions that you didn't share on the weekend, to go back in and add those there. Uh, so check that out. It's a great little resource. We also are going to be using this to send out alerts and information like we used to use Remind for. We'll share photos on here like we used to use Cluster for. Um, we're going to be using it a lot in place of some of the more traditional social media just to be able to share things privately with those of you that are part of our ministry. So check it out parents or students or leaders, if you have any questions, let me know. It's a great little resource. You'll hear me refer to it more throughout the lesson today. Today, brand new series called Habits. Uh, and this is something that we hope will be helpful for you even beyond this first month of the new year. We're going to be looking at how do we develop things in our lives that help us to live more and more like Jesus. So I want to start by thinking about habits, both good and bad. In other words, what are some things that um, you just wish you could get rid of this year? In fact, if you want to go on Minga and you're so bold, list one of the bad habits that you want to get rid of in 2021. On the flip side, what's a good habit you want to start in 2021? And if you list that on Minga, you might find others that are trying to start the same habit and you can actually like encourage and hold each other accountable to get that habit going. Each letter of the acrostic habits is going to represent a different habit we're trying to help you out with. The H this week stands for hanging out with Jesus. And so what we want to do is look at some people who literally spent about three years hanging out with Jesus and how that affected them and then see how that can help us. Uh, so you want to find the book of Acts. If you're in your Bible, uh, this is in the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. You can kind of see that on screen there. But I also want to tell you a little tip. Uh, if you have a digital Bible, you can probably just type in Acts, A-C-T-S, and it will take you right there. Uh, if you have a print Bible, there's a table of contents page. But if you flip that page, there's usually an alphabetical table of contents. And the very first one you'll see is the book of Acts. And so you can get right there to that page. Once you find the book of Acts, we're going to be in chapter 4, which is the large numbers on the pages. Uh, but like if you've watched a streaming show, a lot of times at the beginning of an episode, it'll give you a recap of what just happened. I want to quickly give you a recap of chapter 3 and the beginning of chapter 4 so you know what's happening when we get to our part of the passage today. So we have Peter and John. These are two guys that used to be, um, that were part of Jesus' disciples. They're still following him, but... He has been killed, crucified, and God raised him back to life. And now weeks later, they've started to help continue his ministry on with the church. Uh, Peter had been a fisherman, John as well, uh, and they, they've changed since being with Jesus. So on the day we find them, uh, they're in Jerusalem. They've gone to the temple for prayer. When they go to the temple, they find a man who's begging for money, um, and he's never been able to walk. It says he's lame. His legs have never walked from the time he was born until now. And so he's begging for money to help him out. Through God's power, they heal the man. He's not healed because of anything special about Peter or John, but he's healed because of what God does through them. The man ends up walking and jumping and he's dancing. He's so excited because his legs have never worked. And now they work totally normally, which is awesome for him. The people who are watching are amazed because they've seen him sitting there begging for money, knowing he can't walk. And now they see him up dancing and jumping around. It's just crazy. Uh, Peter tells the crowd to focus on God. The crowd wants to focus more on what Peter and John are doing. And he's saying, no, 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 this is what God has done. And he gets so bold as to point out that it's the faith in Jesus that healed the man and that they can be forgiven, the people in the crowd, and can be healed of their sin problem through Jesus. But not everybody is amazed and excited. There are some Jewish religious leaders that confront them and they end up arresting and putting John and Peter in jail. I know, they just healed a man, but... 
the, the uh, Jewish leaders are nervous because right now this group of Christians, this followers of Jesus, has grown to about five to 10,000 people, and it's making them a little bit nervous of what's going on. And so they put them in jail and overnight, and the next day they bring them out, and they ask them, by whose authority have you done these things? And that's where we find Peter picking this up in Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 13. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Wow, what a, what a powerful verse. If you uh, have your own Bible in front of you right now, underline or highlight that last verse there. They recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Now, yes, literally that means they recognized that they had been hanging out with Jesus as one of his followers. But the verse before that, it said they were ordinary men with no special training. They recognized that these guys who had healed this man and were doing this, this preaching were not people who had grown up in the training of the Jewish religious system. They were fishermen. They were ordinary people. But something about being with Jesus changed them. And the crazy cool thing is that the same thing that changed them 2,000 years ago can change you and me today if we spend time hanging out with Jesus. So let me give you three different reasons and, and ideas related to hanging out with Jesus to kind of help you out. And then we're going to offer you a couple tools that can help you with this. So hanging out with Jesus. Number one, spending time with him helps you see what matters to him. Spending time with Jesus helps you see what matters to Jesus. Think about this in terms of your own friends. So first question, how is hanging out with your friends help you discover what they care about and what matters to them? You just kind of think about that question on your own, or you can go on Minga and answer that. But by being with your friends, you tend to figure out what matters to them. And then based on what you know from the Bible, what's one thing that matters a lot to Jesus? Not something you've heard from somebody else, but based on what you've read in the Bible, what matters to Jesus? And then third question, how did Peter and John reflect Jesus' priorities in what Luke wrote here in Acts 3 and 4? Luke was another disciple of Jesus. He was a doctor and an author. He wrote the books of Luke and Acts. He recorded here what happened with Peter and John. How do we see what he wrote about here in chapters 3 and 4? Reflecting or showing the same priorities of things that mattered to Jesus. Again, all three of these questions, you can just kind of answer on your own and think about. You can journal and write about, or you could hop on to Minga and answer those questions and share with other people. So spending time with Jesus helps you see what matters most to him. Well, how do we do that? Real quick thing here. In the Bible, there's all these books we could be reading about. But if you want to get to know Jesus best, you start with his four biographies, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to give you a tool, like I said, to help you with that here at the end. Second thing, spending time with Jesus changes you. John and Peter were ordinary men. They were fishermen. They had no special training in the Jewish religious system, but they were boldly declaring what God was doing through Jesus. It changed them. Well, think about this. When it comes to your friends again, the people you hang around, if something matters to one of your friends, does it automatically matter to you too? Maybe, maybe not. Think about things that matter to Jesus. What's an example of how one of those things matters to you too? If it matters to Jesus, it should matter to us because he gave his life for us. But give me an example of what's one of those things that matters to Jesus and it matters to you. Spending time with Jesus will change you. Uh, it, if you begin to see how Jesus thinks, it should change how you think. When you see how Jesus talks, it should change the way that you talk. When you see how Jesus worships and prays and trusts in God, it should change how you worship and pray and trust in God. So why spend time with Jesus? Because it will help you to live more like him. And then third thing, spending time with Jesus can happen anytime, anywhere. Sometimes we get locked into thinking, okay, I got to get to church to spend time with Jesus. But Jesus died so the place doesn't matter anymore and the time doesn't matter. Here's the deal. First thing, think about this. When can you spend time with Jesus? 
A lot of people like me like to spend time with Jesus in the morning. That helps me start my day right. I think about what I've read and what, I, what I've hung out with at him throughout the rest of the day. But for some of you, that doesn't work the best. So maybe for you, that's when you take a break in the middle of your day while you're e-learning and you have lunch and you spend time reading the scripture and you're a little bit more awake. Maybe for you, it's at the end of the day. You spend time at the end of the day reading scripture and kind of processing things. Try to find a time that can be consistent, but it doesn't matter what time it is. No time of the day is more holy than in any other. It's just, it's about spending time with Jesus, hanging out with him like you want to hang out with one of your friends. Second thing, where can you spend time with Jesus? Yes, you can spend time with Jesus at church, but you also can spend time with Jesus at home where you're probably spending a lot of time right now. You can also spend time with Jesus at school. And probably some of you spend some time on the bus. You could be listening to scripture or to worship music or reading your Bible while you're there just sitting on a bus. So where you are doesn't matter. Anywhere you can spend time with Jesus. And then how can you spend time with Jesus? Yes, reading your Bible is a great way to spend time with Jesus. And for me, I've been reading a physical print Bible more recently because to be honest, I just get too distracted on my device. But for some of you, one of the great things is that when you've got your uh, your phone or your tablet or whatever it is with you, your iPod, you've got that Bible app and you can read it anywhere that you are. So you can do that. You also could download the Streetlights Audio Bible app. You could find that on Spotify or Apple Music and you can listen to scripture being read with a hip hop soundtrack. So there's a lot of different ways for you to spend time with Jesus. It can happen anytime, anywhere. So hang out with Jesus. I told you we'd have some tools for you. Here we go. First thing, uh, these are both based on some reading plans found in a book called Static Jedi, not about Star Wars, but about Jesus, by a friend of mine named Eric Samuel Tim. So I highly recommend checking out that book. But here's the reading plans to help you out. We've turned them into a one-page front and back printout. You can download and just pull it up on your iPad as a PDF, or you can print it out at home. We've even given you a color and a black and white version to save you some ink on your printer. And so here's the deal. It helps us out because, yes, I can pick up my Bible and start reading, but a checklist helps to keep me on track. And so you read the first day, this four-month reading plan, you're reading about five minutes or so a day. And so for the first day, you're reading Matthew 1 and 2. You get done, you cross it off. The second day, you read Matthew 3. Maybe you like to color it in more. That feels better to me. It's just more fun than making a big X. But you get going along there, you read Matthew 4, 5, and 6. You're having a great day. And then all of a sudden, the sixth day comes along and you get busy and you don't get to your Bible reading. And then it happens again the seventh day. And all of a sudden, you've missed a few days. Well, we don't want you to feel like, oh, I've got to spend like an hour and a half to get caught up in all my reading. And no, no, no. It's about spending time with Jesus. There's a reason we didn't put any dates in this reading plan. It's not about being perfect. It's about spending time with Jesus. If you were going to hang out with a friend and you couldn't make it and you had to reschedule, you wouldn't be like, hey, let's rush through and get through everything we can really quickly. No, you want to enjoy that time with that person. The same thing with Jesus. So if you're doing this reading plan and you get to Matthew 6 and you miss a few days, when you get back in, you don't have to calculate like how many days you need to make up. You just read Matthew 7 and you go on with Matthew 8. And a little, little um, insider tip for you, each of these reading plans for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are 28 days long. And most of our months have 30 or 31 days. So we've given you a few days of grace to kind of take a break. The flip side is also good. You can get ahead and not feel like I got to go back and, and wait for a certain spot to get there. If you're reading and you like what you're reading and you want to keep going, you can get ahead in the plan. There's nothing wrong with that. I also want to show you this four-week reading plan. If you want to spend about 25 to 30 minutes a day, and that's a big commitment, but if you want to do that, you can read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in one month. In 28 days, you can read through all four biographies of Jesus and spend a lot of time hanging out with him and really getting to know the big picture of him. Both of these plans are great because here's the deal. Even with adults, too many of us have not spent time simply sitting down and reading from beginning to end the book the way it was written to see Jesus' life and ministry. And when you do that, it's so helpful other than just reading parts here and there in sermons and lessons. And so check this out. In the four-week reading plan, because you're reading so much more, we have mini checklists. Like the first day, you're going to read Matthew 1, 2, 3, and 4. You get all those done, you cross it off. Or same as the four-month reading plan, maybe you're reading 5, 6, 7, 8 for day 2. You get done, you cover the whole box in because that's just so much more satisfying. Whatever works for you. But those mini check boxes are really helpful because let's say you're reading Matthew 9 and 10, and then you get stopped and you can't get to chapter 11. When you get back into it again, again, there's no dates on here. You're not going to be like, oh, I've got to read this and this and this. It's like, no, 
I pick up and read chapter 11, cross it off, and if I have time, I go on to 12, 13, and 14. If not, the next time I pick up, I pick up where I left off. Because again, repeat this, the goal is not to be good at the habit. The goal is to spend time with Jesus. On the back of these pages, we have these QR codes. So if you've got a printout, you can scan it with your device. Um, if you have the PDF that's digital, there are links in the text there for you to click on. These take you to videos through BibleProject.com that help you understand each book better. For Matthew, Luke, and John, there's two 10-minute videos. For the book of Mark, there's one 10-minute video. We even have an over, a New Testament overview of the whole New Testament. But these videos are done as if someone's drawing on a whiteboard. It's a really cool sketch art, uh, but they help you to really understand the big picture of the story as you're reading through it. So really recommend those in addition to your reading as some helpful resources. Okay, we're going to be going through six different habits in this series to help you live more like Jesus. This very first one is hanging out with Jesus. And we've created a special page on our site, mpcc5678.com slash habits, H-A-B-I-T-S, real simple. And then off of that page, we're going to have resources that link you for each of the six habits. So in other words, we've created this page, this habits page, and there's going to be six more pages linked onto it for each of the six habits. Right now, the H page is open for hanging out with Jesus. And on that page, we have links to each of these reading plans in color and black and white. And we have links to all the videos that are on those pages to help you get started this week with the habit um, of spending time with Jesus. We also want to remind you, we've set up on our Minga page a challenge post for you. If you're going to do the four-month Jesus reading plan, then go on there, find this one that says, I'm going to hang out with Jesus using the four-month Jesus reading plan, and add your name in the comments. It's a way to encourage, um, to see who else is on there, and to hold you accountable to see how things are going, to check in each week. We also have an option if you're doing the four-week reading plan to put your name in the comments on there to say, I'm going to do this, I'm committing to this, and then to encourage and hold you accountable to see who else is doing that same plan as well. And again, you can find that at app.minga.io using the invite code ULPO. Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode of this week of our middle school ministry here at Mount Pleasant Christian Church. Uh, we want to help you to get to know and to follow Jesus. And we hope that this resource on hanging out with Jesus will help you do exactly that. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.